Hey guys, welcome to Get Busy Watching. I'm your host, Honest Dan. Let's talk movies. All right, guys, so we're going to knock out two movies this time. That'll include The Art of Self-Defense, Sword of Trust. We're going to start with Art of Self-Defense. <laughs> I want to be what intimidates me. You came to the right place. This is your belt. It is yours. It is sacred. The film is written and directed by Riley Stearns, whose work I am not familiar with. The core cast includes Jesse Eisenberg from such movies as The Hummingbird Project, The Now You See Me Movies, and Zombieland, and will be featured in the upcoming sequel, Zombieland 2, Double Tap. Alongside him, we have Alessandro Nivola, who has been in Disobedience and Jurassic Park 3, and will be featured in the upcoming The Red Sea Diving Resort. And finally, we have Imogene Poots, who has been in Green Room, and 28 Weeks Later. This is my favorite comedy. There is no other comedy quite like this. You should see this comedy. It will have you howling with laughter. That is all that this movie is, is just deadpan delivery of some of the greatest jokes I've heard all year. Holy shit, this movie is amazing. I, I, can't, I can't get over this movie, guys. I can't. It's so funny, and it's unique, and it's, it's different. I wish we had comedies like this more often. Don't even see The Lion King. Don't even fuck that shit. Spend your time and money on Art of Self-Defense. It, it is a quality film. And that is more than I can say for what Disney does with their live-action shit. Jesse Eisenberg plays Casey who is an accountant who unintentionally sticks his nose where it doesn't belong. He's constantly uh, belittled, uh, made fun of, treated like shit. It's only once he recovers from his attack that he takes up those karate lessons and over the course of the story starts taking less shit from people. He gets more confident, even gets more aggressive. Basically, take Edward Norton's character from Fight Club and make him even more pathetic, but have him just be the focus with no Tyler Durden whatsoever. Holy shit, is this movie basically Fight Club? Holy shit, this movie's basically Fight Club! Dude, that just broke my brain! Yeah, no joke. If you think about this movie, it is Fight Club. You have the, the, the Edward Norton character who gets pushed around a lot, is, is scrawny and, and pathetic, and then you have a Tyler Durden type character who is everything that the weak character wants to be. Uh, the only difference between the two films, in this case anyway, is that in Fight Club, Tyler Durden's all about things you own end up owning you. And shit like that. Whereas Sensei is all about intimidation. He's scary. He's a guy you don't want to fight in a, in a dark alley. Because you're going to get your ass handed to you. And possibly killed. <laughs> and, and even down to the, to the fight club part. It's not even a, a club. It's, it's a karate dojo. So it's even less bullshitty about it. But it, it, the similarities are staggering. The only thing that I can think of that's actually different and really makes this movie unique by comparison is that uh, Fight Club is all about the middle finger to commercialism, whereas Art of Self-Defense is about toxic masculinity. So in the case of Casey, uh, because he has no idea what like true masculinity is, his brain is just open to all forms of possibility of what that means. So like Sensei will tell him, uh, no more listening to adult contemporary. I don't even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> uh, so instead, you're going to listen to metal. So when he starts developing that confidence and becomes more aggressive, like, he's doing crazy shit. Like, he's going to work, throat punching his boss who's just trying to be friendly. And he's, just, he's just like, no, that we are not, stop trying to be my friend. We are not friends. That is not how an employee and employer relationship should be. I'm going to go. I am not going to your house tonight for dinner. 
I am going to go home and I'm going to masturbate to your wife in her swimsuit. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is so amazing. And then he goes into the kitchenette where, where his, uh, his, his coworkers are who have always treated him like shit. And he's just like, I punched our boss in the throat. It felt great. It's like, do you want to sit with us? It's like, but then the other guy, he's all like, but there's only three chairs. And then Casey's just like, you get up and go. And the dude just gets up and leaves. Casey sits down in the chair. He's just like, I think we should do push-ups. And they get up and start doing push-ups. <laughs> oh my god. Now make no mistake, this movie is not glorifying toxic masculinity. It's, it's shining a spotlight on it. It's showing you all the different types of masculinity that exist. There's a difference between, you know, being tough and confident and just being an asshole. So yeah, you get some overtly sexist shit in this movie. It's like, you have this character, Anna, played by Imogene Poots, who is in charge of, of teaching the kids' students. But what you hear is that she's, she's doing this, she's placed here because of her natural maternal instincts. Wow. And there's just blunt shit like that throughout the movie guys i'm begging you please make time for this movie this weekend it's so funny it's so unique and it's so it's just so good <sighs> my honest rating for the art of self-defense is a five out of five all right next movie sort of trust <laughs> okay the south won the war that's right this is something it's, you want to keep under your hat till you're ready to Seems like pretty big news. Up to $50,000. God damn it. The film is directed and co-written by Lynn Shelton. She has previously done uh, a few episodes for Glow and has done single episodes for The Good Place and Santa Clarita Diet. The primary cast includes Mark Marin from Glow as well, and Mike and Dave need wedding dates. There's also John Bass. You might recognize him from Baywatch and Dog Days. Michaela Watkins from Trophy Wife and Brigsby Bear. Jillian Bell from Fist Fight and Rough Night. And she will also be in the upcoming Bill and Ted Face the Music. And finally, there's Dan Backedall from Life in Pieces and Action Point. I think we got another winner, guys. Sword of Trust is a pretty enjoyable flick. I do want to give a quick disclaimer, though. Uh, the movie is very character-driven, and the plot takes almost an hour to kick in. So, and the movie is an hour and a half long. The main selling point behind the film is definitely the, the four main leads and how they bounce off of each other. So as long as you're okay with great acting, I think you'll be all right. And with that in mind, I probably won't have a lot to talk about, as the movie is very simplistic. As I said before, uh, the acting is kind of what needs to draw you in. If you're a fan of Mark Maron, John Bass, Jillian Bell, and Michaela Watkins, you're going to have a great time. It's definitely a lot of fun to watch uh, Mark Maron and Michaela Watkins, you know, bounce off of each other. They have great chemistry. Uh, John Bass is such a good doofus in this movie who is just, believe who's just buying into, into shit like uh, Flat Earths, and uh, 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 ghosts and shit like that. So I love how 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 dim-witted he is in this movie. But I think if there's anyone who deserves some serious praise in this movie is Jillian Bell. Usually, I don't like her body of work. I never found her that funny. Rough night, fist fight. She just seemed more like a cartoon character than an actual person. So to see her be very down to earth and restrained and actually act like a real person, for the first time, I want to see more of her. So thank you, Lynn Shelton, for giving her great material, and great job, Jillian Bell. You've proven me wrong. You are a great actress. Now just don't settle for bottom-of-the-barrel comedies. You deserve better. You proved to me that you deserve better. 
I would say that if there's any negative that I have toward the film, it's the ending. Um, I won't give anything away, but it feels like it's a disservice to the overall story, and nothing about it was justified. I, I didn't like it personally. Still, the rest of the movie is really fun, really enjoyable. So, my honest rating for Sword of Trust, 4 out of 5. Um, we got some upcoming reviews. This includes Lion King. Boy, do I have a lot to say about that. And Annabelle Comes Home. So, keep an eye out for more reviews. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a great one. Hope to see you soon.